The 81 short chapters known as the Tao Te Ching have been translated more often than any other book in the world with the single exception of the Bible. Like the Bible, the Tao Te Ching is a book whose appeal is as broad as its meaning is deep. It speaks to each of us at our own level of understanding while inviting us to search for levels of insight and experience that are not yet within our comprehension. As with every text that deserves to be called sacred, it is a half-silvered mirror. To read it is not only to see ourselves as we are, but to glimpse a greatness extending far beyond our knowledge of ourselves and the universe we live in. The Tao Te Ching deals with what is permanent in us. It speaks of a possible inner greatness and an equally possible inner failure, which are both indelibly written into our very structure as human beings. Under its gaze we are not American or Chinese or European. We are that being, man, uniquely called to occupy a precise place in the cosmic order, no matter where or in what era we live. The Tao Te Ching is thus a work of metaphysical psychology, taking us far beyond the social or biological factors that have been the main concern of modern psychology. It helps us to see how the fundamental forces of the cosmos itself are mirrored in our own individual inner structure. And it invites us to try to live in direct relationship to all these forces. Metaphysically, the term Tao refers to the way things are. Psychologically, it refers to the way human nature is constituted, the deep dynamic structure of our being. Ethically, it means the way human beings must conduct themselves with others. Spiritually, it refers to the guidance that is offered to us, the methods of searching for the truth that have been handed down by the great sages of the past, the way of inner work. Yet all these meanings of Tao are ultimately one. Something mysteriously formed, born before heaven and earth, in the silence and the void, standing alone and unchanging, ever present and in motion. Perhaps it is the mother of ten thousand things. I do not know its name. Call it thou. For lack of a better word, I call it great. Being great, it flows. It flows far away. Having gone far, it returns. The picture before us is of a cosmic force or principle that expands or flows outward, or more precisely perhaps, descends into the creation of the universe, the ten thousand things. Together with this, we are told of a force or movement of return. All of creation returns to the source, but the initial coming into being of creation is to be understood as a receiving of that which flows downward and outward from the center. Every created entity ultimately is what it is and does what it does owing to its specific reception of the energy radiating from the ultimate formless reality. This movement from the nameless source to the ten thousand things is death. And the unique being, man, called here the king is created to receive this force consciously and is called to allow his actions to manifest that force. The ego, our ordinary initiator of action, is an ephemeral construction which is formed by factors operating far beneath the level of the source and which, in the unenlightened state of awareness, represents a kind of blockage or impediment to the interplay of fundamental cosmic forces. In other words, 
because of our identification of ourselves with the ego, what we ordinarily call action or doing, in fact, cuts us off from the complete reception of conscious energy in our bodies and actions. In the ancient traditions of the West, this idea has been known as the doctrine of man as microcosm. In Christian and Jewish mysticism, in the philosophy of Plato and the Hermetic tradition, in Islamic esotericism, we find this idea pouring forth in an endless symphony of symbolic forms and profoundly articulated ideas. In the Tao Te Ching, it is offered to us as a whisper. The metaphysical doctrine now stands before us in outline, an unformed, ungraspable, pure conscious principle lies at the heart and origin of all things. It is referred to as the Tao. This principle moves, expands, descends into form, creating the hierarchically, organically ordered cascade of worlds and phenomena called the Ten Thousand Things, or simply the Great Universe. Man is built to be an individual incarnation of this whole. His good, his happiness, the very meaning of his life is to live in correspondence and relationship to the whole, to be and act precisely as the universe itself is and moves. The secret of living, according to the Tao Te Ching, is to open within ourselves to the great flow of fundamental forces that constitute the ultimate nature of the universe, both the movement that descends from the source and the movement of return. Thus, Lao Tzu writes, Empty yourself of everything. Let the mind become still. The ten thousand things rise and fall while the self watches their return. They grow and flourish and then return to the source. Returning to the source is stillness, which is the way of nature. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of ten thousand things. Ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one sees the manifestations. These two spring from the same source, but differ in name. This appears as darkness, darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. The Tao is an empty vessel. It is used but never filled. O oh, unfathomable source of ten thousand things, blunt the sharpness, untangle the knot, soften the glare, merge with dust. O oh, hidden deep, but ever present, I do not know from whence it comes. It is the forefather of the gods. Carrying body and soul, and embracing the one, can you avoid separation? Attending fully and becoming supple, can you be as a newborn babe? Surrender yourself humbly, then you can be trusted to care for all things. Love the world as your own self, then you can truly care for all things. Empty yourself of everything. Let the mind become still. The ten thousand things rise and fall while the self watches their return. They grow and flourish 
and then return to the source. Returning to the source is stillness, which is the way of nature. The way of nature is unchanging. Knowing constancy is insight. Not knowing constancy leads to disaster. Knowing constancy, the mind is open. With an open mind, you will be open-hearted. Being open-hearted, you will act royally. Being royal, you will attain the divine. Being divine, you will be at one with the Tao. Being at one with the Tao is eternal. And though the body dies, the Tao will never pass away. The very highest is barely known. Then comes that which people know and love, then that which is feared, then that which is despised. Who does not trust enough will not be trusted. Give up sainthood. Renounce wisdom and it will be a hundred times better for everyone. Give up kindness. Renounce morality. And men will rediscover filial piety and love. Yield and overcome. Bend and be straight. Empty and be full. Wear out and be new. Have little and gain. Have much and be confused. Be really whole and all things will come to you. Man follows the earth. Earth follows heaven. Heaven follows the Tao. Tao follows what is natural. Know the strength of man, but keep a woman's care. Be the stream of the universe. Being the stream of the universe ever true and unswerving, become as a little child once more. Know the white, but keep the black. Returning is the motion of the Tao. Yielding is the way of the Tao. The ten thousand things are born of being. Being is born of not being. The Tao begot one. One begot two. Two begot three. And three begot the ten thousand things. The ten thousand things carry yin and embrace yang. They achieve harmony by combining these forces. Fame or self, which matters more? Self or wealth, which is more precious? Gain or loss, which is more painful? He who is attached to things will suffer much. He who saves will suffer heavy loss. He who knows when to stop does not find himself in trouble. He will stay forever safe. You know, production.